This is David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech University, talking about civil engineering 3303 solids. This is a review of page six from the recent exam number one, spring of 2014. We're supposed to write moment equations. Uh, we were given a beam loaded like this concentrated force couple or a concentrated moment here at the left end four foot over that's a cantilever four foot over there's a support we were given the reaction 14 kips uniformly distributed load three kips per foot 21 kip reaction over here and then another cantilever and a five kip react uh, concentrated force at the end of it spans 14 and 4 Okay, the uh, we wanted to write an equation for x1 and x2 from the left end of the beam, which I've shown in blue and orange, and then an equation for x3 from the right end, which I've shown in green. So what I'm doing is I'm cutting a section somewhere in that distance between 0 and 4, 4 and 14, and 0 and 4 from the right end. So I, I never want to get over here at the support at least for x1 or x3 I want to cut that section and draw a free body diagram of it at some point intermediate some intermediate point between the boundaries for x so I'm so good at drawing shear and moment diagrams it helps me then I've got something to check my answers with and so I just draw a quick shear diagram Nothing happening out here, zero up to the support load of 14 where I jump up and I erase that. It's supposed to be 14 right there. And then I go down the slope of the load diagram, the value of the load diagram, which is three kips per foot. I'm going down from 14. So in 10 feet, I'm going to go the area of the load diagram, three times 10 or 30. So from 14 to negative 16 with a downward slope of negative 3. I can figure out this point where the shear goes to 0. 4.66 is just 14 divided by 3. And then I continue over here at negative 16, which is the point I'm at. My 21 kip support takes me up to positive 5. Negative 16 plus 21 is 5. Nothing happening until I get to the end of the beam and I've got the five kips which causes my shear diagram to close so that makes me happy um, my moment diagram from this is I start off with a uh, concentrated moment so it causes the moment to jump down very unusual for me to have a moment at the end of a cantilever but in this case I do it is negative 10 it's causing compression in the bottom uh, do a free body diagram which we'll do down here and you can satisfy yourself or up here that it is creating negative moment anyway it's negative 10 goes over to the support which is following the slope of the based on the shear diagram just stays constant then I'm gonna start sloping up but positive decreasing slope to an inflection point or a vertex where the shear is zero and then start sloping down so I want to figure out how much I'm going to go up from negative 10 to this vertex it's just the area under that shear diagram which is a triangle 14 by 4.66 times 1 half gives me 32.67 so it's going to go from negative 10 to positive 22.67 continuing on down it's going to go from 22.67 down by the area under the shear diagram which is negative 16 times 5.33 times one half for the area of this triangle so that's going to take me down 42.67 to negative 20 and then that is verified by the final area under this portion of the shear diagram which is 5 times 4 or 20 so which takes me back to zero so that's a good this is just for, you don't have to do this, but this is just what I like to do if I have time to check my answers. Then to the real test, the problems were if I write an equation for M1 from X's 
between 0 and 4 from the left. I do a free body diagram. It's very simple. All I have is that 10 kip foot uh, concentrated moment. I draw my distance variable, distance x1, and I cut a section right there, which I've cut in blue, which is right there. I put a positive moment, I assume a positive moment, and let the signs tell me whether or not I'm right or not. And uh, so for this equation, I'm going to say counterclockwise is positive. It has nothing to do with the sign assumption here. This is the positive sign convention that we're going to use for all of this course. Anyway, so sum of moments is zero. I get 10, which is counterclockwise, so it's positive. The M1 is positive, so 10 plus M1, rearrange, M1 is equal to negative 10 kip feet. I go over to my, sheer, my moment diagram. Sure enough, that's in that section. I've got negative 10 constant. Um, in the middle, between the two supports, X is 4 and X is 14, I have a little bit more complicated of a free body diagram, but I want to write that equation. So I just cut that section there in the middle or somewhere, and um, I don't want to go all the way over and catch this uh, support load because I, that's not true for any point other than right at the support at x equals 14. So my section is in the middle somewhere. Um, free body diagram, 10 kip feet at that end. Four feet over, I have my 14 kip support reaction. I have some portion of this distributed load, three kips per foot. And then at the end, I have an assumption of positive M2 counterclockwise, or causing compression in the top. I did not say that counterclockwise. It's causing compression in the top for positive moment for our sign assumption. I draw my dimensions down here. Of course, X2 is just from the left end to some point in the middle there, or between those two supports. I have four feet to the support to the from the end of the cantilever. Then this distance is X minus four. If this is 4 and this is x, this is x minus 4. Furthermore, I have a, I want to know, I'm going to want a resultant for this uh, distributed load. And it's going to occur at the middle of that rectangle, or x minus 4 divided by 2. Now I'm ready to write a moment equation. Sum of moments equal to 0. Counterclockwise is positive for this equation. So I get 10 minus my reaction 14 because it's clockwise times x minus 4 the moment arm I'm summing moments about this point here where I've cut a section point 2 or whatever you call it plus because it's counterclockwise 3 kips per foot times x minus 4 that's the amount of that force times its moment arm which is half of x minus 4 over so x minus 4 over 2 so, and then plus M2. Uh, do all the math, expand it out. I get this equation. Then I get, continue to expand it out. On a test, I recommend that you write all this out so you have something to go back to and check in case you mess up, because I am going to be able to check my answers here. Combining all the terms, this is the way I want it. I don't want it written like this, or x minus 4 squared, or anything like that. I want you to do the math and simplify the equation to this point, as simple as you can get, which is negative 1.5x squared plus 26x minus 90 kip feet. I can check it at the three points on the uh, shared, on the moment diagram. At x equals 4, plug in x equals 4 to this equation, I get m is equal to negative 10. 14 at the other end. I get m is equal to nine, minus 20. Plug in 8.66, that point of the vertex, maximum moment, which is 4 plus 4.66 up here. And I get, sure enough, 22.67 kip feet. So all three of those check. I feel real good about my equation. Finally, number three, the last part was, and each test had two of these on it. And everybody had to do the middle part, number two. Anyway, the last one is write an equation for M3 from the right end at the, from 0 to 4 on the right. 
My free body diagram looks like this. I should have written FBD out here. Anyway, it's real simple. I just have, I'm cutting that section there at that green line. And it looks like this. I have my five kips out at the end of the cantilever. The X3 variable distance to where I've cut my section. And then a positive moment assumed, which causes compression on the top or cupping on the top, which is in this direction on the left end of a beam. And you make a section cut there. Some moments, positive still counterclockwise for this equation only. So that's equal to negative m, because it's clockwise, negative m3, minus 5x times x3, because it's also clockwise, so it's minus. So rearranging m3 is equal to minus 5x kip feet. I can check it at x equals 0. Remember, it's from the right end. Plug in x is 0 into this equation. I get m is equal to 0. Plug in x equals 4, and I get m is equal to minus 20. That checks with my...